I'm going to start by trying to group them up so that a, my a squared and my negative 4a term are in a pair and my negative 10a and my constant term of 5 are in a pair. So is there a common factor for 8a squared minus 4a? Well, they, are, they both share a common factor of 4 because 8 and 4 are divisible by 4. They both share a common factor of a because this has got an a squared, this has got an a. Now if I divide each term, so this is our, this is our greatest common factor for these two terms. If I divide each term by 4a, let's see what I'm left with. Well, 8a squared divided by 4a is, 8 divided by 4 is 2, a squared divided by a is a, and negative 4a divided by 4a, well, 4 divided by 4 is 1, or negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1, and a divided by a, the a's cancel out, so we're just left with 2a minus 1. I'm going to do the same thing with my second pair. I've got negative 10a and positive 5. Can I factor out something in common? Well, I can factor out a 5, right? Because 10 and 5 are common factors. So I'm going to, in fact, because there's this negative, because I'm subtracting, I'm actually going to subtract, I'm going to factor out a negative 5. Okay. So negative 10a divided by negative 5. The negative 10 divided by negative 5 gives me positive 2. And the a doesn't cancel out with anything, so it's still there. My positive 5 divided by negative 5 gives me negative 1. And now I'm again in that situation where I've got a common, a binomial that's a common factor for my two terms. So I'm going to take 2a minus 1 as my greatest common factor. And then for each term, I'm going to divide them by my greatest common factor and see what I'm left with. 4a times 2a minus 1 divided by 2a, 2a minus 1. The 2a minus 1s cancel out, and I'm left with 4a. Same thing happens here, and I'm left with negative 5. And so this polynomial can be rewritten as 2a minus 1 times 4a minus 5. For this third, for this third one, I've got 6x squared minus 9x minus 2 plus 3. I'm going to group together my first two and my second two and see if that gets us somewhere that we want to go. So for 6x squared minus 9x, do they have a greatest common factor? Well, 6 and 9 are both divisible by 3, and x squared and x are both divisible by x. So that's going to be my greatest common factor between those two. And now I want to figure out, well, what's left when I divide out that 3x? 6x squared divided by 3x gives me 2x. Minus 9x divided by 3x gives me minus 3. And now I'm going to factor something out with this negative 2x plus 3. Well, I'm going to factor out, th they don't share anything. But they also don't look like 2x minus 3. But if I factor out a negative 1, negative 2x divided by negative 1 is 2x. Positive 3 divided by negative 1 gets me negative 3. And lo and behold, by taking out that negative 1, I have found two binomials that match, that are factors. So now I can divide both sides by 2x minus 3. So I've got 2x minus 3, that's my GCF, and then what I'm left with is 3x minus 1. All right, I'm going to break. All right, so we're going to continue on with D and E. These aren't much harder than the ones before them, they just got bigger numbers. So again, I'm going to start by grouping together my terms into pairs and asking myself if my pairs have a greatest common factor. Um, and th this is all done with the hope that if I take out a common factor, 
I'll wind up with um, a common binomial between my two terms. Okay, so let's start with 120 and 24. Well, those are some pretty big numbers. So if you wanted to, you could do a factor tree. But I'm just going to skip ahead and just give you a heads up. 120 is actually 5 times 24. So a common factor between 24 and 120 is 24. <laughs> so I'm going to just say that 24 comes out of both. They both have a p squared in common and they both have an n squared in common. And now I'm just going to divide by 24 p squared n squared to see that, to see what's left over. 120 p cubed n squared divided by 24 p squared n squared. Well, 120 divided by 24 is just 5. p cubed divided by p squared is p and n squared divided by n squared is 1. Now my next term is 24 p squared n squared. Well, 24 p squared n squared divided by 24 p squared n squared, everything cancels out. So we've just got a one. Okay, let's look at our second pair. So I've got negative 40 n squared p minus eight n squared. What number do they have in common? Well, I happen to remember that 40 is just eight times five. So 40 is divisible by 8, and 8 is divisible by 8. And because they both have a negative sign, I can actually factor out a negative 8 for both of them. They both have an n squared, so I'm going to factor out an n squared. And they don't both have a p, so I can't take out a p. So what's left if I divide both of those terms by negative 8 n squared? Well, negative 40 n squared p divided by negative 8 n squared is the 40 divided by the, the negative 40 divided by the negative 8 leaves a 5. n squared divided by n squared just leaves us with a 1. And p, we can't cancel out, so that leaves us with a 5p. Negative 8 n squared divided by negative 8 n squared is just plus 1. And now look at that. We wound up with a common binomial as a factor for each of our terms. So I can factor out that binomial. I can factor out 5p plus 1. And what's left? Well, if I divide this term by 5p plus 1, the 5p plus 1 cancels out. So I get 24p squared n squared. If I divide this by 5p plus 1, that leaves us with negative 8n squared. And you could stop here, but I just want to draw your attention to something. Did you notice that this binomial still actually has some common factors in those terms that we could actually factor out? Because both of them have an n squared and 24 is divisible by eight. So if we wanted to go one step further, we could I'm just gonna leave this 5p plus 1, but factor out from this term an 8n squared. And that would leave us with 24 divided by 8 is 3, p squared stays there, and n squared divided by n squared is just 1. And then for this term, negative 8n squared divided by 8n squared is negative 1. So we actually broke up this polynomial into three factors. A 5p plus 1, which we can't take any more factors out of. An 8n squared, which we can't take any more factors out of. And a 3p squared minus 1 that we can't take any more factors out of. That one was a pretty tricky one because it had an extra step that we haven't seen yet. Let's look at our last question. All right, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to break this up into pairs. And I'm going to ask myself, what's a common factor for each pair? Well, 10 at AX plus 14 BX, I can take out AX and I can take out 
10 and 14 are both divisible by 2, so I can take out a 2. Now I want to ask myself, what am I left with when I divide by 2x? Well, 10ax divided by 2x, the x's cancel out, the 10 and the 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5, so I'm left with 5a. When I divide 14bx by 2x, the x's cancel out, the 14 divided by 2 leaves me with a 7, so I'm left with 7b. All right, so that's that's, I have factored my first term, my first two terms. Now I'm going to factor my second two, my second pair of terms, 15ay and 21by. What is their greatest common factor? Well, they both have a y, and on inspection, 15 and 21 share a greatest common factor of 3, because 15 is 3 times 5, 21 is 3 times 7, both of them share a 3. Now I'm going to look at each term and ask myself what happens if I divide by 3y. 15ay divided by 3y, my y's cancel out, my 15 divided by 3 leaves me with a 5, and nothing cancels out my a, so I'm left with 5a. My 21by, if I divide that by 3y, 21 divided by 3 gives me positive 7. B doesn't cancel out with anything, so it stays there, and the y's cancel out. So I've got these two terms simple, are, are factored to 3y times 5a plus 7b. And now notice, I've got 5a, a common factor of 5a plus 7b for both of my terms. So I can factor that out. I'm going to say 5a plus 7b. Well, if I divide 2x, 5a plus 7b by 5a plus 7b, the 5a plus 7b cancels out. So I'm left with 2x. Same thing here, my 5a plus 7b cancels out, and I'm left with 3y. So this polynomial simplifies, to, or factors to, 5a plus 7b times 2x plus 3y.